Hello, this is Dick DeAngelis, director and producer of the Fairfield History Series, and welcome to another edition of Inside Fairfield's History. In today's session, we'll actually share with you the interview with John Preston, a major landscape artist of the Midwest. Uh, John's work is known all over galleries and uh, museums uh, and people's homes in the Midwest and, and, and around the country. And what's exciting about this was John gave us an insight into what the natural landscape in and around Jefferson County was all about. So I hope you enjoy this interview. And before we get started, enjoy this little segment of Life Before Fairfield, where we take one of John's paintings of a shot that we had taken from the drone. And then we took that painting and melded it into the drone shot. All right, thanks and enjoy this interview. Well, I think part of what makes this area so special is it changes all the time. You don't have to go out of town to get something new. The weather gives you a different look in the same place. The change of the seasons gives you an entirely different look. And you've got a little bit of everything there's uh, pretty good large vistas. Uh, there's close and intimate places. There's streams and creeks. There's a river nearby. There's ponds. There's uh, just about everything you could want uh, within driving distance. And four very distinct seasons to give you a different look. Part of why you're painting it is because there's just kind of an attraction. You just feel an attraction to this, to paint it. And since you can't quite put your finger on what it is, the feeling or the sensation, uh, I think that's why I try to get the different appearances of the of the landscape as it changes over time. I think there's something probably a little bit different about a landscape where it's not wilderness. It's not something that you have to kind of work against. And it's not a totally tamed landscape like an urban area or a suburban area. Um, maybe because of the agriculture or the vegetable gardens or just the growing people in the land are working together and talking to each other if you will um, cooperating it's not something that conquers you or and it's not something that you have to conquer um, but it's a hard question to answer because there's something that you feel and you can't quite put your finger on it. So you try pictures, or you try music, or you try poetry. Like there's something about this light that's cutting across the top here that gets my attention. And why? Because every place else I've lived, supposedly that's happening too. But it's just different here. And I don't know exactly how to put that into words. Maybe it's because there's not so much distraction that I can't go out and enjoy it or watch it. And I think a big part of it is that it was probably there in the places where I used to live, but 
I always had something else going on, so I never had a chance to look at it and watch it and enjoy it, or at least not enough that I could make a picture of it. I have memories, but not good enough to do a picture from. If I was an artist first coming here, before anybody else had moved here, I'd probably be looking for the things that were different from wherever I was coming from. But I think the light is probably the thing that would be the most captivating. Because wherever you go, it's a little bit different. You're at a different altitude or the humidity is different. Um, and all of that affects uh, color, atmospheric perspective. And those are the kind of things that an artist looks for when he, when he wants to paint. So the thing that would be uh, most interesting to me is probably the, 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 the horizon. I can see where the, the storms are coming from. I can see the cloud formations. I can see the in the morning if it's foggy or in the afternoon if there's a lot of dust up in the air uh, that uh, creates a just a different look from day to day. I think that's probably the light. It's always the light. A painter wants to, to see what's unique about the light in any given area. And it is very unique here. One of the things that's unique about here is I could, I could almost say it's a sort of a medium-sized area. The uh, forests are not large forests. The fields are not endless stretches of fields and the water isn't just an endless body of water that you're uh, looking across. Um, it's all kind of near each other um, and then there's something about that that I guess from a biological standpoint it's nice that the, the, the trees want to be near the water, the, the uh, winds blow the seeds around for the grasses and things but um, because you have a variety of elements near each other, it, it makes for an interesting composition for an artist, but it probably is the thing that contributes to the feel of the place. Uh, it's, it's very human-sized. Not, you're not overwhelmed by a vast expanse of water or mountain or desert or uh, forest. Uh, everything is sort of uh, a comfortable size that you can uh, appreciate and uh, uh, very very different feel than being near the ocean or the mountains. Well I guess you have to uh, when you're painting a landscape you have to go to it and you don't want to just be a tourist so there's a lot to be said for living where you paint um, and you have to like the place you live, uh, to live there, and you have to enjoy, uh, enjoy your subject so that you get something out of it. So if, if I was just visiting the place, I might catch the most salient part of it or the thing that sticks out. But the little subtleties, the, the, the things that creep up on you, the things that you don't notice unless you uh, stay there and, and, and like the place enough to wander around and, and explore. Uh, those things you're not going to find uh, unless you live there. And just spending time with your subject. Uh, it's, if, if it was you were painting a portrait, you'd probably do a better job if you knew the person. Or you knew something about their personality. Same thing with this landscape. Um, the more you work with it, the more you live in it, uh, the more you wander around in it, the better you get to know it, almost like a personality. And I think that's probably the thing that gives me an edge uh, versus someone who just kind of uh, ran in and did a quick uh, study of some particular thing that sticks out when you first come here. Well, I'm used to seeing cattle here. And I'm used to seeing deer, and I'm used to seeing turkeys and a lot of things that we didn't see 10 years ago, and now there's a lot of them around. And 
it must have been really interesting to see something like bison um, because they're so unique as a as a shape and uh, very different than cattle or deer or something like that it must have been uh, the noise they make a big part of painting outside is not just what you're looking at but what you hear and your, your senses really are 360. I can't imagine what it must have been like to be maybe 60 yards away from like a huge herd of bison and listen to them snort and stamp and chew and move around in the tall grass. Um, occasionally I, deer will cross my path uh, when I'm outside or a lot of rabbits, a lot of turkeys, that kind of thing. But just, uh, it must be amazing to think that there were these large animals that were regular hab habitats of the area. Um, I think probably that would have been something, had I come out here when uh, people first started coming out here and I wanted to paint, I think definitely they would have been a feature uh, in the landscape.